Hello, friends and family from around the world. This is Mike with Daily Events Worldwide, and we are on September 30th, 2025. Welcome to another surviving day on the planet, and welcome to the Daily Do, giving you your space weather update as well as earthquakes, volcanoes, and world weather. Looking here at imagery of our sun from earlier today, plasma filament erupting yet again, crusting into view. Still, Solar Dynamics Observatory is down, so we're only showing three hour. Uh, time lapses of our sun, big plasma filament taking off today, a couple M-class solar flares as well. Having a look now at 171 angstroms, we do have Earth-facing coronal holes, and we are being affected by them right now. The solar winds are coming in over 700 kilometers per second. Wow, hang on, folks, friends and family from around the world. Thank you so much for tuning in. Here's a look at our solar winds hitting Earth right now. Left-hand side showing the wind speeds. And right-hand side showing the pressure that our planet is under during this coronal hole event. So the pressure is on and the earthquakes are pounding our planet. 6.9 earthquake this morning in the Philippines. 6.0 shortly thereafter, Indonesia. So current space weather conditions, we are under R1. Minor radio blackout impacts expected as well. Level 3 geomagnetic storm impacts are expected and ongoing right now. Solar winds, 692 kilometers per second. Solar X-ray flux showing three M-class solar flares the past 48 hours. Solar X-ray flux is low and geomagnetic activity hopped up to a KP7 earlier this morning. If you were able to get up before sunrise, you would have seen some auroras out there in most of North America. Having a look now at the space weather prediction spiral, big coronal hole stream moving in coming to our planet and expected here for at least the next five days to the start of October. Now we're looking at Alaska 3 showing the wide spectrum, showing all cosmic energies leaving our sun the past 48 hours. There's that big coronal mass ejection from the plasma filament eruption earlier this morning. If you haven't seen this morning's short, please check it out. And again, thank you so much for blessing play, everybody, and thank you so much for your patience and support and love to this channel. Here, we, here is a look at tonight's Aurora forecast versus tomorrow's big time tonight as far south as North Dakota and quite possibly in parts of Michigan. Now let's have a look at earthquakes past 24 hours. As mentioned earlier, 6.9 earthquake rocking off the coast of the Philippines, Kelepe, 6.9 magnitude multiple aftershocks through the region and just south shortly thereafter a 6.0 magnitude earthquake indonesia followed by a 4.5 so active west pacific plate notable earthquake here eastern india 4.9 and as well the deepest earthquake the past 24 hours tonga region with a 4.5 magnitude 555 kilometer depth so we expect and we do see all of this earthquake activity during coronal hole wind streams. Just a fact. Carrying on here around the world, North American plate, USGS is reporting 270 earthquakes past 24 hours, increased seismicity across the North American plate, all of a sudden gone quiet through South America, Central America, and as well to the other side of the planet, Europe and Africa. Very quiet as of late. So let's have a quick look now at the last seven days for shakers and movers around the world and again i want to thank you all for watching and being a part of this channel daily events worldwide sharing the awareness and sharing my love for our planet and the sun and everything that happens within earthquakes volcanoes world weather and of course space weather affecting it all here's a look the last seven days for shakers Earthquakes around the world, largest being the 6.9 that struck earlier today. Stay safe and healthy. You live in an earthquake prone zone. Just have a plan and be ready. Hashtag no fear here. Just aware and prepared. Carrying on here, let's have a look at our air quality forecast brought to you by the active and erupting volcanoes from around the world. Last I reported, we had 83 active and erupting volcanoes, including... Kilauea, which has now erupted 34 times since last Christmas, 2024. 
So there's a glance at sulfur dioxide emissions for the next three days. Not too bad, considering all the eruptions at Kilauea. It was a small one today, episode 34. Carrying on here around Indonesia, Southeast Asia, Africa, and Australia. Again, no major plumes or volcano eruptions to talk about today, anyways. Well, we do know that we have at least 80 that are active and erupting around the world, and something is erupting in the Southern Hemisphere. Look at all this sulfur dioxide emissions spewing and encircling our Southern Hemisphere right now. Antarctica is popping somewhere. The only active and erupting volcano is Erubus. So, let's carry on here. World weather forecast brought to you by Windy.com showing here for the next 10 days, as we've got a big system grinding into the BC coastline, it's going to bring days upon days of rain towards Vancouver. Eventually, that will split and interesting Fujiwara effect through the Atlantic Ocean right now with the tropical storm Humberto and Adelaide. I do believe that's the name. Also, some pretty strong cold systems. Heading down from northern Canada in the long-range forecast here, Northwest Territories will be seeing snow, and as well, most of Alaska and the Yukon in the long-range forecast. Things are going to be cooling down, and lots of moisture coming from the north. Also, watching through the Atlantic Basin as the Atlantic hurricane season is far from over. We've got another six weeks left, so we could see some doozies here in the long range. Notable couple cyclones, possible development, western India, as that slowly grinds. And there's also a typhoon heading towards southern China, Hong Kong, yet again. Thoughts and prayers going out to everybody affected by severe weather events, typhoons, hurricanes, earthquakes, volcanoes. Much love to you all. And again, I've been absent and not uploading now for about three weeks. I want to thank you all for being a part of this channel and thank you for your patience. Hopefully you all can resubscribe, hit that thumbs up, get in the comment section and let's grow again. I'm back and we're here to stay. Thanks to Starlink Internet, we are back. And again, much love everybody. Hope you enjoy the content and information shared here. Some big changes happening on our planet and I'm happy that I'm able to share these events and images with you. One of the most amazing communities on YouTube. I appreciate you all. You've been here for me through thick and thin, and I'm going to continue to be here for you daily. Please follow again on Facebook as well. My account has blown up over there, over 50,000 followers. So get in the description below and Follow the links to all social media platforms. Thanks so much for pressing play, liking, and subscribing. All right, one last thing here before we go, before we say goodnight. This is a look at our upper-level winds from nullschool.com awaiting the incoming northern polar vortex as it is stretched right now and not too dominant. Just going to have a glance around the world here at the upper level winds, especially along the equator and our oblonged polar vortex in the southern hemisphere stretching up towards the South Atlantic anomaly. It's very interesting because what we're going to see for winter is what we're seeing now in the southern hemisphere. It flips. We'll get these polar vortex and very strong velocity winds in the northern hemisphere for our winter time. This is a look at our southern hemisphere polar vortex right now. Let's have a glance at it last year at this time. This was the shape of it and how strong it was. A bit oblonged as well, but stretching towards South America. This one here stretching towards the South Atlantic and Ocean. Just some amazing images, and thank you again for watching. Please don't forget to give a thumbs up. Share with a friend. Much love. Stay safe and healthy. Aware and prepared.